With the internet becoming more accessible to anybody in the world, it becomes a scarier place every day. There are quite a few apps that are available to the public that many might not know the dangers of. As I have continued to make videos covering the dangers behind certain apps, some of you have left comments about an app called Kick, reminding me of its existence. Kick is a messaging app that was founded in 2009 and published in 2010. Over the years, it has endured many controversies due to very very poor safety features. Today, we are going to be discussing the dangerous side of Kick, an app that has flown under the radar for years, especially more recently. I remember when Kick was kind of more popular. It is basically another messaging system, except now there are also live streaming features, and a lot of these streams are used for 18 plus reasons. This app allows anybody over the age of 13 to use it. Not only that, but because it is no longer as popular as it was, but is still sometimes used by kids, this is creating a playground for dangerous people. The Messenger app is a little different from the traditional text. You still have your contacts, but the messages that you exchange between each other are deleted. Anyone can contact anyone. The Kick Messenger app has 200 million users, and 40% of them are kids from the U.S. Meanwhile, internet crimes against our kids are up 200%. UW-Madison Information Security Officer Nick Davis says without record of any chat, it's nearly impossible for parents and police to track. The scariest part for parents, it takes a lot to trace it. All you need is a name, birth date, photo, and email address. And remember, no phone number required. So it's that fast. It's very fast. A child can have a Kick account. While the popularity of Kick has died, there has been a rise in conversation about how horrible Kick was and still is. Many people have come forward sharing their horrifying experiences using Kick, and many question how or why the website is still functioning today. Kick was made around the time that people used messenger programs instead of sending actual text messages that required a phone number. For those of you who are not old enough to remember, it used to be the norm to have to pay per each text message sent or received. In 2008, the price was an average of 20 cents per text message, running some people up thousands of dollars each month. Nowadays, it's much cheaper to send a text and much more common to use a data plan. This is why many people chose to use internet-based messaging systems over a decade ago. As time Times changed over the years and the demand for messaging programs began to fall, people still used Kick. In 2015, the app was valued at $1 billion. It wasn't until 2019 that Kick was preparing to pull the plug on its own services, but right before it was supposed to shut down, a company called Media Lab swooped in to save the day, purchasing the app and allowing it to stay up. Despite resources claiming that Kick has displayed growth since Media Lab has purchased it, nowadays the app is considered to be a barren wasteland. According to Chrome base, the app has gotten less than a million downloads within the past 30 days, and seems to be used by less than 4 million users per month. A dramatic difference from TikTok's 750 million monthly users. So why would people think an app like this is more dangerous than an app like TikTok? Because with lower traffic levels, creeps can hide in plain sight. Before we continue with this video, I want to thank today's sponsor, Scentbird. So I'm sure you've heard of magazine subscriptions and Netflix subscriptions, maybe even subscriptions for your pet food, but did you know that there's also a subscription service where you can obtain fragrances? For just $17, you could try a new fragrance every month with Scentbird. Now, Scentbird has a lot of scents for you to choose from, so if you get overwhelmed, fear not. You can take a quiz on their website to tell you exactly what type of scents you might like. What I really like is that with Scentbird, you do not have to commit to a full-sized bottle or a full price of a perfume or cologne. But what's even better is that you will get more than just a regular sample size from your local store. Let's get into the fragrances that I have received this month. The first fragrance I have is Story Vinit by Valmont called Just Bloom. When you get your Scentbird vials, they usually come with a card like this and it tells you exactly what is in it on the back and this one has a Lily of the Valley, Gardenia, and Ambergris. The next fragrance I have is Vanilla Sky by Skylar and this scent is very nice for the cooler weather that we're about to get. It has notes of cappuccino, pure vanilla, and caramelized cedar. The final scent that I have received this month is Dolce & Gabbana's Pour Femme. This scent I 
I think is perfect for fall as it has notes of toasted marshmallow, raspberry, vanilla, jasmine, and tangerine. It's both very sweet and very warm at the same time, and it just combines all of the scents that I really like for this time of the year coming up. I have a few special occasions coming up in October, which I will definitely be wearing these to. Use my code to Mimi2 for 55% off of your purchase at Scentbird.com. Just a bit over $7 for your first month. Available in the United States and Canada. Thank you so much to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video, and with that being said, let's get back to the topic. This review sounds so similar to other reviews I have read when discussing different apps. I'd give this a zero star if I could. If you are under 18, or even if you're any age, don't download. This app is dangerous. This app is easy for get anyone. I'm aware that they can do it on any social app, but it's worse on here. This app isn't as popular as it used to be and doesn't get much attention. So players tend to use this rather than Instagram, for example. They groom kids on here and do even worse things. This isn't a safe app at all. There is not much safety features to this messaging app, such as friend requires or verification. People actually get groomed from this platform. It terrifies me. You don't know what you're doing if you use this insecure app. App full of perverts. This app is full of pervs and sexual stuff. Totally not what it used to be. This is because a lot of people get away with more since less attention is put on the app. But even in the mid-2010s, many complaints have been made about the app's safety. From the beginning of the app's launch to current day, there have been countless reports of very creepy people lurking within the chat rooms. Tons of people have shared their experiences with this app, and some of them are truly horrifying. The comments that I'm about to read are actually from you guys. You left these comments on my previous videos where I discuss dangerous apps. At 13, I met someone on this app. By the way, this app refers to Whisper, which is also owned by Media Labs, who claimed to be 16 and in a whole other country from me. I don't remember what the location things were at this point, as it was around 2014. We then moved to Kick, and he continued to groom me and talk very to me. I gave very risky pictures and I almost gave him inappropriate pictures of myself underage. Thankfully, my parents found out what was going on and intervened before anything more can happen and took my phone and restricted my use. Had that not happened, I don't know where I would be today, but experiencing online grooming makes me such an advocate for children and trying to get them to not use something that can get them into harm. I really hope that this person is doing okay now. I think it's fantastic that you're advocating to to prevent this from happening, and I'm very thankful to hear that your parents intervened and helped protect you, and I think that that's something a lot of parents really need to do with situations like this. You really need to have an open line of communication with your children and know what they're getting into and really have a good understanding of what apps are on their phones. Another person says, Kick. I was groomed heavily on the app Kick as well growing up. When I was about 14, I discovered the app Kick, and I really wish I didn't have that app. It messed up my teeth teenage years. I used to use Kick. It had similar issues to this. You couldn't really post anything, but it was a text app. I used it to roleplay when I was 12 and ended up seeing NSFW pictures, getting people trying to to me, and other things. It was horrible. Apps like this need to be way more moderated. These stories were being covered in the mainstream media as well. Just last month, Vincent Hill of Upper Marlboro was arrested and charged with soliciting from a 12-year-old Howard County girl. Police say Hill was using kick. In November, Victor Arrojo was charged with kidnapping and a 12-year-old Perry Hall girl. A man accused of luring a teenage girl into a relationship through a messaging app is now in jail. It is another all too real reminder to parents to know what's going on on your children's phones. Pamela Casey told me that kick, which you have on your phone, but it's much like a chat room, the old kind that used to talk to people on the computer, is a way for pretty much anyone to contact people or children online. And they say that kick on a phone, this is how a grown man from Birmingham found and preyed on a girl in Bluntsville. According to police, a kick message sent to a student here Monday resulted in the arrest of the band director. A 22-year-old Morgan County man is in custody after federal authorities say he tried to hire someone to have a Wisconsin woman abducted and 
According to court documents, Mann had unwittingly joined forces with an undercover detective from Minnesota. Records show he offered the detective $2,000 to kidnap and a woman. There is no record of what's going on and what's being transmitted. It's only between those two. We made Sonica's username public. And two days later, here's one that says, hi, I'm Brad. You are so beautiful. She already had hundreds of messages. So here's one that says, what's up? You just looking for friends or some fun? Yeah, one guy said that he already had the hotel room and I just needed to go to where the hotel room was. One outlet actually interviewed a registered offender as they explained how easy it would be for them to get in contact with children through the app. Speaking in the shadows to protect his privacy, this man makes no secret of who he is. I will always be a offender. Now in his mid-30s, it was in the late 90s when he was convicted of using a child under 13. He served prison time and is listed on the sex offender registry. The first thing that I thought was, wow, I can be whoever I want to be. I can I can get anybody I want. I can I can achieve my glorification through this app. That's when I said, you know what, I have to stop this. He deleted the app, but he wanted to show us just how easy it is for someone like him to find potential victims on the app. I'm sad. That's all I'm going to write. He set the parameters for who he was looking to speak with, and within minutes, without reaching out to anyone, we had two apparent teenage girls reaching out to us. Why are you sad? And right there is where you got, you got the open door. That's when I predator can jump in like me i would jump in and say hey what's your problem let's talk we did not respond and deleted the profile according to bbc the app was involved with over 1100 child sa cases in 2018. it was stated that delays due to a bureaucratic nightmare of obtaining information from the company put the children at further risk a grooming case with over 90 profiles were being investigated some being offenders and others being victims. But officers were having a really hard time getting through to an actual person running Kick's website. The police were left with automated messages, making their investigation much more complicated and time consuming, allowing these creepy people to put more kids at risk. According to Kick's website, there has since been an updated guide for law enforcement, but going through the PDF that it shares, things seem to be the same as the officers described in the article. It just seems to be easier to access this information instead of wasting time hearing the same thing from automated responses. But this adds a layer to everybody's concern. An app used by millions of people every month does not have any system where anybody can get through to a human being to address a safety issue, not even law enforcement. They have to jump through so many hoops and go through so much just to even attempt to get in contact with a person behind the website. That is insanity. But there's even more creepy things about Kick. In 2020, Kick deepened their partnership with Kin, giving Kick users the ability to make crypto transactions through the app. Kick currently has a live streaming feature where people can earn money. The live streaming feature is something that is even more concerning because a lot of times the live streams you will see on Kick are very, very inappropriate. In fact, for a website that allows its users to be as young as 13 years old, there is a lot of inappropriate, unfiltered stuff on this app, more so than any other app I've discussed so far. These chats are straight up 18 plus completely unclothed, suggestive pictures. And as many people mentioned in the reviews, there are tons of bots pushing out 18 plus content, stuff that is definitely not meant for children. You can easily make an account, register as a 13 year old, and still be subjected to this. In fact, subjected is a very, very loose term considering that in any category you go on, no chat room has anything to do with the actual category. Every single chat room has some form of inappropriate imagery or content. And on top of everything else, a lot of reviews on both the Apple and Android store complain about how broken the app actually is. So in full, there seems to be absolutely no moderation whatsoever. The app itself is just completely broken. At this point, there seems to be more bots than people on the app itself. And the people that do use this app for a legitimate sense of entertainment are putting themselves at very high risk to encounter some very, very 
scary, dangerous, and shady people. Creepy people seem to be flocking to this app more and more because of how unpopular and how unregulated it is. They can get away with a lot more than they could on any other app. And this app seems to have a very poor system of obtaining data from these people who might be committing crimes. I mean, law enforcement even has trouble getting information to complete investigations from people who misuse this app. I highly suggest that if you are a parent that you check your kids' phones to make sure that this app is nowhere on them. Because while it is widely unpopular compared to other apps being used today, people still are using them. As I always say, monitor what your children are doing online. If you know anybody who is a parent, if you don't have any kids yourself, let them know that things like this are happening online all the time. Allowing your child to have full access to anything online at this point is extremely, extremely dangerous in my opinion, and you should always be checking in on what they are doing, what apps they are using, and where they are posting things, because this type of situation can get out of control really, really quickly, and has gotten out of control really quickly as we have discussed in this video and it's just not a good thing just please monitor what your children are doing thank you so much if you've made it all the way to the end of this video and thank you to everybody who has been supporting me over on patreon especially lewis miss tanisha anthony trust out michelle and Deemer wm thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video